Hey everybody, welcome to another continuous print release video. Uh, this is for version 2.2.0. Continuous print being a plugin that allows you to do automated printing for 3D printing. There's a number of substantial changes that I wanted to introduce today, uh, just to make sure folks were aware of them, that they can use them effectively, that there's no confusion. Um, the largest of which being changes to the queue interface, uh, changes to how to uh, set counts for jobs and sets. Um, there's also a number of uh, beneficial improvements to land queues, submission, editing, that sort of thing. And there's also several backend improvements I wanted to briefly mention just so that y'all are aware of them. Without further ado, let's start with the changes for the job interface. Without any jobs in the queue, it should look basically the same as you've seen before. If we add a set, you will notice immediately a couple of things have changed. The first of which is that the job count field is now actually more of a remainder field. So this should help with subsequent printing once you've finished printing a job. So rather than saying I have a count of five and I want to print two more, so I set the count to seven, I just set this number here to two, and that gives you two additional. Similarly, for sets, we have uh, a count field here. This is the equivalent of the set count in the prior version, um, but it's just a bit more clearly indicating that this is the number of times to print that set per run of the job. There's also an additional field here that's editable as this run, which allows you to print one-offs. So if you want to add a couple of initial prints uh, just cause for extras, or if you happen to print a few prints, but some of them fail, and you don't want to mess around with the number of set counts per job, it can get kind of confusing and weird, um, you can just amend this value here. So for instance, if we wanted to say two per run, First of all, the this run count will update if you change per run, and that would give you the expected number of four of this item, since there are two runs of the job and two prints of this set per job. Um, but if you say wanted to have a couple extra, you could say for this run alone, I want to do another, you know, I want to set it to five. So this will basically say for the first run of the job, there will be five prints, and then for all subsequent runs, there will be two. And in the case of two repeats of the job, you have a total of seven. Again, this is uh, some pretty powerful stuff. If you're confused by this run, just ignore it. Uh, you can set per run and it'll basically be the same as a set count, but it does allow you to do some extra interesting things if you so desire. Now I'm gonna save the job. And now that I've saved the job, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, some of the land queue improvements. So the first improvement here, you can just drag a job to the land queue. There is no dialogue because of you know land queue weirdness it just ends up in the land queue it is now published and available to everything in the land the reason for that dialogue previously was that you couldn't undo this change well now you can just drag it back you can drag it out of the land queue back into the local queue there is full bi-directional compatibility you don't need to worry about you know submission as a final action similarly the dialogue existed because it would be uneditable once it's dragged in well now you can edit that job. You can edit land jobs. And it's now basically reached full parity for land printing and local printing. Some substantial improvements. This should make everything a lot easier if you're trying to print with the land. You don't have to worry as much about back and forth stuff. The one caveat of this, of course, is that if you're pulling something from the land back to the local queue, there will be a slight change to where the files are hosted. Um, so you can see here that Previously, I just clicked a, a file from this file list. Now the file comes from this imports directory. And that's just because if you're pulling a random job out of the land queue, chances are it may not be on the printer that originally posted it. So you have to actually pull the code or the G code file for that. And it has to go somewhere. I don't want to mess up anyone's file system. So it's currently in the continuous print imports directory. So now for a quick note on some backend improvements. There's a new cleanup script that runs periodically that keeps the continuous print file folder clean. It tends to clutter up if you do a lot of land printing because that's where all of the, um, the packed gjob files go to serve over the network. This script basically just tracks whether or not those files are being used anymore and cleans them up afterwards. There's also some added changes for custom queue events. These are events that are fired by the continuous print plugin uh, and not by Octoprint. Uh, and you can use these to perform other actions, uh, other automations based on what happens in the queue. Uh, this can be especially important if you're trying to do something when a 3D print finishes, because all continuous print actions, such as the bed clearing script, are treated as prints to Octoprint. 
uh, you get a bunch of additional actions that you may not actually want to act upon. So this is really useful for clarifying and, and doing specific actions based on when a print started, when the queue is finished, when a job gets canceled automatically, that sort of stuff. That's all the updates for this version. So if you have any questions or problems, please submit them through GitHub and happy printing.